I don't know if you've ever heard of a woman named Hetty Green. Most people don't know Hetty Green. She died in 1916. I guess it kind of rhymes. Green in 1916 died. Well, what was interesting about Hetty's story is that she kind of lived the life of a pauper.、Um, But she wasn't a pauper. She was an extremely wealthy woman. When she died, people, neighbors, friends, even her own family were shocked to discover that as a result of her careful stewardship of her money and her finances and the investments that she was making in the stock market, that she had accumulated over $100 million in 1916. This was incredible wealth. And why it was so confusing to all of her friends and family and neighbors is because she lived like a woman in poverty. But it wasn't because she didn't have money, it was because she was so chintzy. And so Hetty, in the morning, every morning, ate the same thing religiously oatmeal, cold. Why? Because to heat it cost money. Hetty's own son, later on, would lose his leg to an amputation because she was so busy trying to find a free clinic that would take him. That she wouldn't spend money to actually go to a hospital where he could be treated immediately. This is the life that Hetty lived. And of course, it's astonishing for people at the time, and it's still an astonishing story today, that a person would be so incredibly wealthy and so chintzy, chintzy and miserly and fearful of losing everything that she wouldn't spend anything that she had accumulated and that God had blessed her with. And the reason I tell that story is because I think sometimes as Christians, we're like Hetty Green. We, we have an enormous reservoir of riches that God has given us in the person of Christ Jesus, but we live miserly, not because we, we think we've got this great reservoir, but because we actually believe we're poor and that we don't have much and that God doesn't love us very much. And there's, He's kind of doling out these little scraps to us and just trying to, almost like leading us on, you know, like it's just, He's giving us just enough to keep us following Him, but not enough to satisfy us. Not enough to actually make the Christian life the abundant life he promised. And so we live under a lie of Satan who tells us, You're not rich in Christ. He hasn't blessed you with every spiritual blessing in Christ. You're poor, and you have to perform, and you have to, you know,、uh, reach a certain point of being able to meet the need that God demands for you to be able to be accepted by God and to receive these blessings from the Lord. And so we fall into this, this、uh, condemnation, and we think that God doesn't care about us, and we think that God doesn't love us, and we think that God is, is miserly himself. He's like Hetty Green, this massive fortune, but just doles it out in these little scraps to his people. But that's a lie from the enemy. And Paul, of all people, you're gonna, it's g o n n a blow your mind why Paul was so important to be the author of this book. But Paul, of all people, comes and he tells the church. You are rich in Christ. You have this spiritual wealth. Your groom has paid the dowry, and now that you are betrothed to this person of Jesus Christ, and you're awaiting the, the marriage of the Lamb and the marriage supper and all that, when you come into the family of the King, you are going to be rich beyond belief, and all the inheritance that belongs to Christ will be shared by us, the church, and by us as individuals. So, we need to kind of change our thinking, and that's what we always have to do every time we come to the Bible. Every morning I get up and I said, Man, I need to think differently. <laughs> Because I know somehow in the middle of the night my thinking went boop like that, you know, and I need to get up in the morning and be reminded of God's thinking and God's perspective and God's plan. And so we have the text of Ephesians that reminds us of who we are, the bride of Christ. Of the plan that God has for us and the treasures that He has in store for us, not only in this life, but in the life to come as we follow after Him.